Welcome back to Camp Out West. If you're new here, we're John and Emily, and we recently just sold our home and all our belongings to buy this, an old abandoned caravan park that used to be home to the coal miners that worked in the colliery across the road. The mine closed back in 1989, and the caravan park has been left to become completely overgrown. So now that we're the new owners, we've been working hard over the last year to clear up all the leftover rubbish so we can build our own tiny home and open up a cabin and glamping site on the land for guests to come and stay. We hope you enjoy watching today's episode as we attempt to start work clearing the back of our land. We finally start building our toilet and shower block, as well as trying to think of a new solution after realising we've wasted thousands of pounds on our glamping tents that have completely broken after only one month. So if you watched our video a few weeks ago, you'd have seen us setting up our glamping area, but we've had a bit of a nightmare with our tent. So since day two of setting them up, they started letting water in and the poles started breaking. And since then, the poles have completely sheared off. So that's why the tent is now only half up because it can't stand up. So we're gonna just get ready to take the tent down and hopefully try and get it repaired. Right, so these are two of the uprights for the tent. What you can see at the end here, I don't know if you can see that. So that is what's, well, where it's snapped off from one of the couplers that make up some of the angles for the tent. So the hope is today we're gonna to go and see Chris, um, who is a bit of a whiz with a welder, have everything metal and see if he can get some tube in like this and essentially make us new brackets. You can see where it's all like deformed and things at the end. I don't know if this is gonna be usable. Um, and then where we have got the brackets that haven't broken off, there's only a few like this. Uh, we're going to get them to weld gussets, is it gussets or gussets? Gussets and reinforcement onto the bracket that we've got just to make it a bit stronger. We opted for these tents as we loved the design and also as they were advertised as being waterproof and able to withstand mildew and mould, we thought they would be an amazing option for our climate. But after only being up a month, the tent is covered in small black specks of mould all over the canvas and it has been letting in water on every seam since day two. And now all the legs and leg joints have broken off, it's just not fit for use. So we've just taken the, the cover off of the tent and it's revealed to us how badly damaged they are. So most of the joints on the side here have all sheared off. Uh, the welds have all cracked and even some of the, the poles have split. Um, so looking at how much it would cost us to get them all welded, we've just made the decision to actually like not bother with this tent because um, it's actually one of the bits has ripped the, the canvas material as well. Because we've already spent a lot of money on this, we don't want it all to go to waste. So. We're going to keep the canvas so we can use it as patching and things for the other tent. But the actual frame here, so the top bit of it is still somewhat solid. We're thinking we could reuse this over winter um, as an extension to our chicken setup. Because um, in the UK they do have an issue with uh, bird flu where they tell you you have to have all your birds under cover at certain parts of the year. So I can imagine this with like welded mesh all over it and then like a tarp. Uh, this might make a nice extension to the, the living area for the chickens for the winter. Crap! <laughs> Thing is, think how much even just the deck has cost us, eh? Mm. Okay? Mm. What a waste. Thanks, it's talking now. So we've laid out all of the tent to just dry and I think we're just gonna go into town and have some lunch. We don't wanna 
dwell on um, yeah, how much money we've just wasted. So yeah, we're gonna just have a little break, go into town, have some nice food, and then hopefully come back and just be in a better mood. I think because we work so much to save up to do each element on the land, it just feels like really disappointing that the tents have not worked out at all. We haven't been able to stay in them. We've spent so much money on not only the tent, but all the furniture and everything. So yeah, just gonna go have a little break and then come back. Okay, so we just finished lunch. We went to the Lolva, which is in Bury Port, local to us. It's owned by our friends Holly and Lee. So it was just really nice to go and catch up with them and have some really nice food. So we're feeling a lot more positive. And now we're just gonna go and get some materials ready to start the foundations of our shower and toilet block build. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Goodbye. So we just got back to the land after going to get all the materials for the start of the shower block build and I just thought I'd give you a quick garden update. So the vegetables were doing so well and we've had a massive infestation of caterpillars and butterflies and they are just eating everything. So the biggest casualty has been our Russian kale and it's literally just left with stalks. They have been feasting on it and we were away for a few days shooting weddings and came back and look, oh, there's one here. They're so hard to spot. Oh, there's one here and there's, oh, oh my goodness, they're everywhere. Can you see them? One, two, three, four. So we thought we'd done the right thing by covering all the raised beds in some mesh net to protect them. And a lot of you were commenting to us saying that they wouldn't do anything because the butterflies just lay their eggs through the mesh. Um, and that is the issue we've had. So I'm gonna, tomorrow I'm gonna take out all the Russian kale because it's just not survived. And I'm gonna plant in our garlic so it'll free up this space for us. Uh, we've never planted garlic before, so I'm really excited for that. We've had a bit of an issue with our courgettes. They flowered and we were so excited. And then in the beds, the bits that would become the courgettes are just broken off. So we're not sure if something's been eating them, but that's literally all the courgettes off the, the plants that are, they've all gone. So we don't think we're gonna get anything from this one. I guess this is our first time growing, so it's all gonna be a learning curve. We actually just ordered a greenhouse. We, it was in a sale, so we thought we would just get it now ready for next spring. So hopefully by having a greenhouse, we can just protect things a lot more than them being outside. Um, you can see that the red cabbages have also been annihilated. <laughs> our Christmas sprouts that our friend Adam gave us. Adam, we're so sorry, these have not survived. The caterpillars have obviously feasted on these the most, but the veggie pod has been the saving grace because everything in here, ta-da, <laughs> is safe. It hasn't been eaten and it's just thriving. So our nephews Jack and Ryan helped us plant the veggie pod and I'm so excited because the beetroot, the golden beetroots, which the boys were most excited about, have started coming through and you can see them here. They look a bit like carrots, but I'm really excited to try this one. And I wonder if I... Come here, I can see the carrots. That is so cool. Look how tiny they are. I'm just glad everything in here seems to be doing okay. But my favorite part of each day has been coming to check and see how all the vegetables are doing. And thanks to today's video sponsor, Skillshare, I've not only been learning everything I can about growing our own food, but also how I can preserve it too. 
Now we're ready to start our first batch of fermented vegetables, all in under five minutes. If you're new to Skillshare, they are an incredible online learning community, full of an amazing range of classes, from gardening to cooking, illustration, graphic design, video, photography, and so much more. Skillshare has such an amazing variety of classes, and I've loved discovering and learning everything they have to offer. Now we're heading into winter. I've just finished doing the sustainable stays class, learning about protecting the garden from the coming cold weather. So today I want to show you how to take this bed and winterize it, get it ready for winter. And I've also been doing the Janet Hesselberth home canning course, ready for our upcoming beetroot harvest. I don't want anything to go to waste, so I've loved exploring all the different canning and preserving classes available. And I have so many more classes I've got bookmarked ready to take. If you'd like to become a member and see what Skillshare can teach you, just head to the link in our description below and the first 1,000 people that use the link will get a one month free trial. Right, you can't really see, but behind me, we're over on the far side of the land, which we haven't really shown. Uh, so this is the bit of the land we haven't really touched. Um, and in the background in here, this white stuff you can see, there's, well, I don't even know what to explain it. It's like a, it's a decking that has like fake walls built around it. Um, it's something that the previous owner's son put here as, I guess, a way that in the future he was going to try and get planning permission with it. Um, it's not really a building or anything, but it's for the purpose of like, if you look from above, it kind of looks like the foundations of a building, um, but it's basically just a pile of rubbish as far as we're concerned. Um, but it's made up of insulated panels that are used for making walk-in fridges. So they're not really ideal for anything we've got planned. But one of our neighbors uh, wants to make like a couple of carport type things um, in his yard. So he's gonna come over today and help me dismantle this, which is gonna be a big help to me. Um, but also he's gonna get the material out of it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So this is what we're looking at. This is one of the uh, insulated panels see animals have been trying to make a home in it or repurpose the foam themselves. Yeah, I'm guessing these are just, yeah, they're barely really holding on you. So I'm hoping this is going to come off quite, quite easily. For the actual flooring. So underneath here is just on, like, I'd say it's on a deck, but it's not very substantial. Our neighbor's wife, has requested him to build a little aviary for their finches. So they're gonna use these panels to make like a, a warm little aviary by their house. So the birds can uh, kind of live outside. So we have got a bunch of other stuff to move before we can get to a lot of these panels. So luckily we've uh, bought ourselves a trailer. So we're gonna have the means now to get rid of this stuff. Might have a chair we can salvage. If we find anything interesting, we will uh, we'll show you. First I got to work trimming the overgrowth so we had a clear route to take the boards out. And then we started breaking down the structure. This is as far as we've got with taking this structure apart. I think we're probably about halfway done. Um, so Chris has been over twice and we've just been doing it in little sections when we've both got a, a spare couple of hours um, and it's been roasting as well. And um, surprisingly, these panels are quite heavy. Like some of them are 15 foot long. Uh, they're a hundred mil insulation and they're, you know, they've got like galvanized metal each side. So they're quite heavy. Um, but yeah, nice to start making a dent over this side of the land. We've kind of, ignored this side of the land obviously we've got plenty going on over there um, but another factor over here is we've got one caravan left which is behind the camera now uh, which we'll show you um, but there's actually a beehive in it 
and that beehive's been there for over a year now. So I'd imagine pretty established, a fair old uh, amount of honey in that roof, um, all mixed in with glass fiber insulation. So absolutely disgusting. Um, so we've, we've had a guy, Ken, come down to actually have a look. Um, he's identified they are honeybees. Uh, so they're Welsh black native bees. Um, but he's gonna come back in the next week or so uh, to actually take the, the bees from us and take them back to his farm and he's going to put them in a new hive uh, so he can actually get you know a crop of honey from them. Um, we've had a couple of people asking why don't we keep them um, or even people offer to have their hives on our land that they can maintain but at the moment I think because we're still in the process of clearing areas we don't want to be worried about strimming and then setting off the bees. Um, even like making the entrance here where I strimmed uh, to get the, the guy's van in to remove some of these sheets. Um, I got stung on the hand and then I was getting dive bombed by a load of the bees. Um, and then Ken told me that this time of year, because we're in the autumn, you know, obviously they've had their summer crop of honey. They're all extra angry because uh, they're actually protecting their crop of honey. So, um, yeah, we've been wary obviously around here. I've been stung once. Luckily, I'm not allergic to it or anything, but obviously it's not very pleasant. But um, yeah, glad that we've actually made like some sort of start over this side. But yeah, it's, it's shown us actually how much more land we've actually got to play with. So for future projects, this is really exciting. So now that we're finished over here for the day, uh, we're gonna make a start on our shower base. So we're gonna get the Land Rover and the trailer and head off to get our sub base. Morning. So the weather has taken a turn this morning, but um, we're going to crack on anyway. So this area that we're in now, we're going to start working on the laundry and shower room. So what we need to do today is we're going to make the footings for this building. So the building is going to be like a temporary building um, and it's going to sit on concrete piers. So we need to dig 12 holes that are all nicely spaced out. Um, and then we've gone and got some sub base. So the sub base will go in the bottom of that hole and then we're gonna make some concrete forms using the old decking boards. I'm gonna pour actual concrete feet um, and then we can bolt our building to that. So the first job was clearing the ground and removing the surface layer of soil and weeds. No way. That's the coolest thing. So Emma just digging here, taking off the uh, the surface. She dug up some negatives. The bit that we're actually digging up here is, a, is an old base of a caravan. So we're digging it out because there's actually like a sub base. And we find in all sorts, like someone's glasses that they've repaired with the tape. So we're clearing the, the top layer off this base. Um, you can see there's an old slab here. So this is actually a site of an old static caravan. So underneath here, especially at this bit here, there is, you get the metal. There's actual like hard, hard gravel or whatever you want to call it. So we're scraping off the top here just so we actually know what's going to be underneath the shower. Um, we found this really long old electrical cable. 
just sticking into the ground. And then next to it, we found, where is it? Somebody's old, uh, oh, old treasure. Come on. Oh, wow. That's, that's the old water. Whew, how crazy. Yes, obviously this was the services for this caravan. So that would have been their fresh water. Don't know what that is for. No treasure? No treasure. So yeah, I guess really we should fill this in. So um, this is where we got to with the base. Um, so we spent like, well, all of the afternoon into the evening scraping off the surface here uh, just to find what was underneath. Um, so in our next video, we're going to be laying out all of our footers, uh, mixing our own concrete for the first time, which will be uh, interesting because we've, uh, we've only had it delivered before. So we're going to be mixing it all up in the wheelbarrow. Um, so pouring 12 footers to support the timber base of our shower block. And I think we've got our delivery of timber coming at the start of next week. So then we can actually crack on with building something. It feels like quite a while since we've built something. So excited for that. A um, few people have been asking for like more regular updates. Uh, we're coming to the end of our wedding season now. Um, so we've been sort of saving up. So we're at the point now where we're going to actually have enough money to build our shower block um, and actually get cracking in on the cabin because uh, winter is fast approaching. It's now September and uh, we've already noticed like in the evenings it's actually getting a bit cold. So making us a bit worried about the winter coming. But um, yeah, excited to get this built, have a nice warm shower, somewhere to do our washing up and things. Um, and then actually crack on with the cabin. So that's the end of today's episode. We hope you enjoyed watching. Tune in next week to see how we get on with our shower and toilet block build. And we'll also be announcing the winner of our Veggie Gar raised bed competition. So stay tuned for that one. We've been getting a lot of requests from people to put out some more content um, and more regular posting, uh, which we're working on. But uh, we've also got a really exciting announcement. So about a year ago, we got approached by S4C, which is the, the Welsh language TV channel in Wales um, and they've actually been coming to see us fairly regularly and they've been filming their own series on us um, so there's going to be a YouTube series which the first video is live now um, so we'll leave like a little taster of that at the end of the video and then there's a link that you can go and watch that um, and then we're also going to be doing three like TV episodes um, all in the Welsh language because if you didn't know I'm a first language Welsh speaker um, and that's something that's really important to me and I think you know, not that many people speak Welsh um, and I think I've, I've got the ability to do so and I think if I can spread the word get more people watching Welsh content then I'm happy to do so so go and have a look on that link um, if you can go over there watch it there's subtitles there so if you don't <laughs> speak Welsh you can also still enjoy watching it and you, you might even learn some Welsh yeah it's great for learners I'm a Welsh learner it's really rare in parts of Wales that everybody speaks Welsh where John actually moved to as a child they started a new school in Wales and only him and his two brothers were the only Welsh speakers in the whole school so yeah really proud that we get to do this um, but like always you can follow us on Instagram at Camp Out West to see what we get up to in the week but we'll see you next week see you next week click the video here to watch our first episode with S4C Click your video on my Iguilor Penard Cantab and Esperorek.